So although there are three father figures and one mother figure here, uh, it's really a division, a deconstruction of what parents are. They have elements of all of them. And just like Dorothy with her friends going down the yellow brick road, they all represent different aspects mm. of, of, of what goes on in our, in our brain, I think. Mm. And so as a parent, sometimes I'm Bagheera, sometimes I'm Baloo, sometimes <laughs> Akila, sometimes Raksha. <laughs> <laughs> How did you handle the stunts? Because obviously, I'm sure there's a, a shortage of a short stuntman. So how did you handle those scenes? Well, I didn't, I'm not a climber that much because I, I was raised in the city, so I don't climb that much. <laughs> but after the movie, it looks like I'm climbing. I'm always climbing, and it's like 400 feet off the ground. But I can only be 30 inches off the ground, so it's just a blue pad, and it looks like it's so like far down, but it's really not. <laughs> but he did, I, I, but one, one of the reasons we hired Neil and one of the things he, didn't, he, he uh, neglected to share, which was a big deal uh, for us, was we put him through the paces with the stuntmen before we hired him to see what type of athlete he was. And Neil's actually great at a lot of sports. But, uh, and so when I would direct him, sometimes it was more like being a coach. So, so, so sometimes he, in a scene, he was, you know, his body posture wasn't right. And I'd say, uh, be more poised, uh, be a little more explosive. And, we weren't getting there, and I said, do you play baseball? He's like, yeah. I said, do you ever steal a base? He's like, oh, yeah. I said, pretend you're getting ready to steal second base. So when you watch him running away from the cattle in the stampede, right. that wonderful posture he had, <laughs> he was stealing bases. I said, okay, go for it. Okay, the pitcher's looking at you. Okay, go for it, break for it. And, and so uh, you get this incredible sense of focus out of him, and really that's the trick of acting. You do it to yourself, Depending on what technique you were trained in, it's tricking yourself into believing that what you're doing is real and creating an immediate moment, especially on film. We just need a moment of clarity. And, once, and, and when Neil's eyes would light up, it would light up the screen. I knew I needed someone to anchor emotionally the whole story and to, for you to subjectively see it through the eyes of it. And somebody who, even when he was not being busy, is somebody who's going to be compelling and somebody you relate to and enjoy watching for an hour and a half, which is a lot to ask of any actor. And so it was that, it was Neil, just the energy you see who he is, as, you, as, as Giancarlo said, they are who they are, even from a young age, they kind of inherit their soul. And, and on top of that, just being able to, be able to uh, keep him engaged for the nine months we were working together to keep the, that immediacy and that focus uh, on cue for when we had to film. So it was a big, it's a big deal. Uh, what Neil was able to do, and I think a, a testament to all the people, not just the people on this couch who worked with him, but also the crew, which was really like a family. Can you kind of speak to, you've produced really large movies, and this is, this is a really big movie, but such a unique one. Can you sort of speak well, to? I had the wonderful experience of working for the last 20 plus years at Disney as an executive, um, overseeing production from that side of things. And, um, and I transitioned from that position to this film as a producer. John was uh, uh, very gracious to embrace me in that role. And that was also my only, you know, most important job. The biggest job I had was to find, I think, the right filmmaker. And so we knew when Alan uh, talked about making this title and what we could do with this title, and we all imagined what it could be, you started to figure out what kind of skill sets you needed uh, to pull that off. You need someone who had the warmth and humanity to, to inject it with the charm. And with the thematic quality, you know you need And you also had to have someone who knew how to master this incredibly complex thing, because we knew that we, there wasn't going to be a live animal on the set. There couldn't be. In fact, um, you know, to, to portray it the way Kipling had imagined it, had envisioned it, if perhaps even for the first time, because he was envisioning a, a live action world with a child living amongst these animals. Mm -hmm. We needed someone who could do all that, and when you looked at the list, it whittled down to one guy. Um, and I'd known John and a little bit. And he wasn't available. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then we called John. Um, no, but uh, John and I worked together a little bit on, on some development of a very ambitious idea before that was also Disney related, and I knew that he knew these things. He was very uniquely uh, situated in knowing how to do all that. And, and beyond that, I also knew from the stuff we'd worked on earlier of his deep passion for, uh, for Disney itself and for what it represented, and he knew that as well. And I'd been in the company for 20 some odd years, and he knew it as well as anyone that I had worked with, uh, if not better. And so um, we were very lucky that uh, he was available. 
your love for the story shows in every frame. So going into it, what was your biggest fear? And now coming out of it and having it come to the masses, what are you most proud of or most excited for people to see? My biggest thing was not to drop the ball uh, on the people, for the people who love this underlying property. And knowing inherently I couldn't just take the G-rated musical for children and make it photo real. I knew we were gonna have to deviate in some basic inherent ways from that and could you still preserve the soul and the charm and the feeling of the first one while including aspects from the Kipling stories and changing it from a G-rated uh, musical to a PG-rated adventure that would have more thrills and be more exciting and scarier at times than the original but also maintain the heart, the humor and, and, and the music too. And this is something that belonged to the whole culture before we decided to update it. And so we, you know, so it's very exciting and these are it's been a very exciting couple of days as people are seeing it for the first time and as these thoughtful questions are coming through as I sit in the rooms and talk to each of you, it's all starting to, I'm starting to get the sense of how, how it all came together and how we did. So I, I think we're, we're very grateful to all of you for taking the time to, to, to ask these thoughtful questions, to take the time to share the, spread the word about it, and, and also to uh, the sense of relief as this is all closing out and we could kind of exhale and let, mm -hmm. let it know that our job's done and now it goes out to the world.